Hi guys, so I'm back and I'm excited for this acrylic pour I came up with. Um, I've always wanted to do the Northern Lights and so I came up with the way of trying to do them. Hopefully this will work. <laughs> um, I'm going to flood this canvas. So this is a uh, 16 by 24 I believe, larger canvas. Um, and basically I'm using the Pabeo, it's the Payne's Gray, so it's like a deep blue. Um, and I'm going to flood the canvas with this deep blue, because on nights when you have northern lights, it's not super black, but it, you know, just so that the colors will show up. But I am going to do some black in the corners. So, um, so I did mix up some black, which I also put some silicone in. And that I'm just going to do in the corners, like on the outskirts, where the light would fade away. And then for the northern lights, we're going to do the beautiful iridescent green, which is also from Pabeo. Um, it's 359, and it's called, yeah, iridescent green yellow for the northern lights. And sometimes you get some blue and white with them. So I just have some metallic Artist Loft blue and some Artist Loft metallic white. And each one of these has uh, silicone in it, which I'm just pushing to the bottom. And they also have, obviously, flow trawl and water <laughs> mixed in as well. So just getting that... Uh, silicone mixed in. So I didn't put any silicone in the Payne's Gray. So that's the only one that kind of doesn't have silicone in it. So so without further ado, oh I need some paper towel. <laughs> Before we get started, paper towel is important. <laughs> oh, here we go. Always make sure you got a lot of paper towel on hand. <laughs> Because things get messy. And just reusing um, this plastic here. So I'm also going to just tape it down a little better. And while I'm doing this, I also wanted to tell you guys I'm super excited. Um, I wrote an acrylic pouring for beginners ebook. And so I get a lot of questions about, you know, how to start from beginners and newbies or people working already doing acrylic pouring and just want to know my process. And so I thought an easy way would just be to write an ebook and I have pictures and links and links to the video and for mixing your paints and everything. So all in one place, it's an ebook guide. I'll have a link in the description for it so you guys can find it and yeah hopefully I hope it'll help answer everybody's questions about um, starting acrylic pouring and beginning it and I yeah there's a lot of cool stuff in there and pretty pictures so <laughs> I hope that'll help you guys and yeah super excited I'm working on a couple other ebooks as well so I can't wait to share those with you guys and my new store is up and running so <laughs> I finally got that working and um, so I'll have a link for that in the description as well if you wanted to check out some of my art and some of the jewelry I've been making and you can buy it on my new store so alright without further ado let's get back to the Northern Lights acrylic pour <laughs> and uh, so for this one I'm gonna flood with the Payne's Grey first. Ooh, look at that. Pretty, pretty colors. So I'm going to just see how much I can stretch this. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to mark <laughs> for the camera points. <laughs> Helps me out a bit. And let's see how far we can stretch this paint. Alright. 
right. Now we have a nice flooded canvas. Looks really good. <laughs> nice deep blue. Now to start what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bit of black to the corners and I'm going to use my palette knife <laughs> to kind of mix it in there just because the light would fade away on the corners so before I do any northern lights. Some silicone bubbles going. So I find the torch just helps to pop any of the silicone bubbles coming up. So that's why I use the torch, just the heat from the torch. So, okay. So now the fun part. So I'm going to do these northern lights like coming across like this and then when this is all dry I'm going to paint a silhouette of trees in front and I think it's going to look pretty cool. So it's going to be painted over top of uh, the bottom half here. So and I think I'm going to use the same technique that I did kind of with the peacock. I might pour a bit. We'll see. <laughs> I was going to do it just with the with the um, popsicle stick, but I think I might actually pour some. So we get much thicker northern lights. That looks so cool. <laughs> it's so iridescent. <laughs> and I'm also going to pull out my small little palette knife, maybe, for some of it. Because I really want to keep. Thank you. 
Okay, so everything's dry and I love how it turned out. Um, I thought I would show you guys because I get a lot of questions on how I clean the silicone off. So I'm going to show you. <laughs> I use um, isopropyl alcohol and all I really do is I just got some paper towel and I just take a little bit of the alcohol. Maybe I'll do it off the painting. Put a little bit on the paper towel. And I can see the shininess of the um, silicone up here. So I'm just going to quickly brush off. So you're going to see you get a little bit of paint that comes off, but not too bad. As long as you don't go over this because it's wet now, right? So I'm just going to go over other areas while that evaporates. And while it's evaporating, so you can still see it's kind of shiny up there so I'm just letting the alcohol evaporate a bit and then you can go back over if you still see silicone and you can wipe it off so like this part's already dry I can wipe a bit more and so far that part's pretty clean doesn't take very much so there <laughs> so that's pretty much it and you get the silicone off um, off of your painting so and I can do this little one because I used up some of the colors so there's you know some shiny parts so I'll just take this still has a little bit of alcohol on it and I just kind of wipe the uh, silicone off so yeah works pretty good so now what I'm gonna do that this is now cleaned with silicone is I'm gonna mix up some black and I'm gonna do some trees in front of our beautiful northern lights scene so you can see that the um, paint's gray which was the blue it dries quite dark so just so you know I probably didn't need the black in the corners but that's okay I like it I love all the cells in here and stuff it's pretty cool okay so to make this look like a scene I'm gonna mix up some I'm just using artist loft flow black and I don't need I don't need a lot, but this paint is just a little bit too thick. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put some in a cup. Maybe like that much. I can always mix up more. And I'm just going to use a Liquidex pouring medium. But this is a glazing medium, but it'll work. I just ran out of the pouring medium. <laughs> Um, the reason I'm not using Floetrol is because it create Floetrol also creates cells, and in this silhouette, I don't want any cells. So I'm just gonna add a bit of this to make it a bit more liquidy or runnier paint. That is so. So I'm adding a little bit of the medium. It's still quite thick and I might add a little bit of water so I don't want to add too much water because it makes the where's my water <laughs> okay so I'm gonna add a little bit of water
Okay, so it's a little bit runnier, which is good. I'm gonna try that mixture and just see how that goes to do the trees. So, make sure you guys are in frame. <laughs> Okay, so for today, I'm going to try out the fan brush for some trees, and then I'm also going to use like a pointed brush. Yeah, maybe like this one. That one's been chewed up a bit. <laughs> flat one. So to start I'm going to do basically want to do some nice big trees on the side and then bring in some little trees in front. So I'm going to take a bit this and it might be hard to see but I'm gonna do a nice big and start with a line and I'm just gonna use the black to make some lines it's gonna go over my um, my more northern lights because the silhouette of the tree I'm using the fan brush and if you run out of paint you just pick up a little bit more so you start off small and then you kind of get bigger as you go to the bottom. Obviously just like a tree. <laughs> so I think I'm going to have my trees cascade down a little bit. So I could probably even do the line of the next tree like right really like that in the blue, so I'm going to do it right here. This is where the tops of the trees are where I like to use the um, the pointy brush or the fine tip brush so I can get a really fine tip to the tree. And just pick up paint as you run out. And just go back and forth for the top <clears throat> and pick up some paint to go down for the bottom half of the tree as it gets bigger down below. So I'm not too worried about what's happening down here because I'm going to fill this in. But here I really like what's happening. So you can see how the northern lights are starting to, starting to come through behind the trees. So use the pointy brush to get the fine point of another tree. And you can do big ones and small trees. Like here I could do a smaller tree. Like so, 
and then I'm going to have the trees come down a bit more. So here I could have maybe like, like a tree cliff face that comes down with some smaller trees. I could do a bigger one right here. Keep switching between the fan brush so I can kind of use a little bit of the Kind of a bigger tree right there. And you just can kind of make up how you want your trees to go. So I'm going to have them come down and then go back up for your northern light pieces. Okay, and now all that's left is to basically just paint down the bottom half in black. I know it looks black, but it's actually like the dark blue from the Payne's Gray. So I'm just going to 
cover this part up with some black. Now that I have my trees in, And I'll do the sides as well, because they are blue. <laughs> A very dark blue, but that's still, still a blue. Okay guys, so everything's pretty much dry, and lastly what I forgot was the stars. So. You could do this before you do your trees, um, or you can wait till after, <laughs> like I'm going to, because I forgot about them, and just put your uh, your stars in after. So, just grabbing some paint brushes. Okay, so. For the stars, I'm just going to use some white and just dab them on where I want. Um, some people like to use a brush and, you know, put white on and flick it, which totally works too. I just don't think I'm going to put very many <laughs> stars as if you were to flick a brush. So I'm just using whoop, Artist Loft White. And all I'm going to do is just pick up, so this is a little bit more time consuming than if you were to flick the <laughs> white paint on, but I'm just going to make little stars everywhere. So, and then you just take a really skinny brush and you can just make as big or as tiny as you want. And it just kind of helps to set the night scene. And I'm even going to put some in amongst the northern lights because the stars, they're still there even though the northern lights are here. So.